I was recently asked this very question, how do you keyframe? And it kind of got me thinking, it's something I do all the time and don't even think about. But I guess if it's not something that you've done before, it can be a bit daunting. So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial to sort of go through how you keyframe. I guess a quick thing about what a keyframe is would be useful. Um, in the old days, when I was a child, well, slightly before that possibly, um, animators had to draw each frame of the animation by hand. Um, with the advent of computers, we got keyframes. Keyframes basically tell Resolve, at this point in time, I want this group of settings. And at the next point in time, I want another group of settings. And the computer will then work out what should happen in between. OK, so let's make some keyframes. Keyframes can be applied on the Edit tab. They can be applied to nodes in Fusion. Uh, we'll start off on the Edit tab. So let me see what I got. Let's bring Mickey back for a minute. OK, so we've got Mickey on our timeline and what we want to do is we want to zoom into Mickey. So we would decide where we want to start zooming into Mickey. So we put our playhead where we want to start zooming in. Now, if you come over to your inspector, if your inspector is not open, it's this little button at the top here that says inspector. And down the side, you see all these little grey dots. These are your keyframes or keyframe markers. And we're going to concentrate on the zoom. So if you go to your little dot and click it, it turns red. So that means you've set a keyframe. Now you come forward a few frames and you make your adjustment. So you're going to zoom into Mickey, like so. And this automatically sets your second keyframe. Now you've told your computer that at this frame you want these values and at this frame you want these values and what the computer will now do is work out everything in between for you. So now when you play through it automatically zooms smoothly. So once you've set that you can also adjust what's called the easing and that basically adds a slight curve to the zoom at the minute it's very linear it starts at one point and goes to another in a straight line now you can add smoothing to that if you come down to the bottom of your clip you see this little waveform button if you click on that you've got the zoom path here now if you select your dots you can then ease in ease in out and ease in ease out sorry so it's ease out ease in and out and ease in so if you do that, it adds a slight curve and then you can do the same at the top. So you've eased out and then you ease back in. And what that does is it starts off slowly, speeds up and then slows down as you get to the end of your animation, whatever your animation might be. So it just makes it a little bit smoother. If you don't want to do it that way, you can also come up to your inspector. If you notice at the side of your keyframe icon here, that you've now have this little arrow. If you click that, it will take you to your keyframe and then click it again and it will take you to the first keyframe. At the minute, there's only two. So once you're on either end, the arrow disappears. If there were more keyframes, it'd still be another arrow. If you add to place where your keyframe is red, if you right click, you get the option to ease out and then right click and ease in and that does the same as doing it with the curve so that's basically how you use keyframes um, that's using keyframes on the edit tab anything that has a diamond next to it can be animated with keyframes so next we will bring in a fusion comp and we'll go into Fusion 
and we will add a text node. with something meaningful in it. Let's go down to one view because I don't need two. So now we want to animate our text so that it does something. What do we want to do? We'll have it come in from the side. So again, it's the same theory. This ribbon is your timeline. This is your frame numbers. So you would come to the frame that you want your animation to start on. So say frame 24. If you then go to the layout, you can keyframe, say, center. And if you put the Y value, it will drop it off screen. If you then come forward to frame 48, for example, and change this back to 0.5, your text appears. So you now have this. Now, again, you can add easing, but in Fusion, you've got much more control over what that easing does. And to do that, you come to the top of the screen where you've got Spline Editor and click that. And you get this window. If you click on text, it shows the path. This button, Zoom to Fit, puts your keyframes in the window. If you now select both keyframes and press S on the keyboard you get your curve. Now, the difference here is that you've got much more control over that curve. So you can, for example, grab and hold these handles and pull them out. So you can get a different smoothing curve, like so. And that is the fundamentals of keyframing. So that pretty much scratches the surface. Um, there's more you can do with keyframes. Um, you don't need to have just two keyframes, for example, if you want your text to go up higher and then come down, you just position where you want the top of your climb to be and you would adjust your position this will automatically set another keyframe so we've now got three keyframes so i mentioned the arrows earlier now if we click on an arrow you get two arrows here because it says there's a keyframe before and a keyframe after this keyframe like so and again if you come back to your spline editor we can reset this and re-smooth it. So to reset it, Control and L will make everything linear again, and S will smooth everything. So you've got a smooth animation. Now, if you think that your timing's wrong, you don't need to delete all your keyframes and start again. Simply close the spline editor and the next one along is keyframes, which is your keyframe editor. If you open that, again, hit zoom to fit and then hit the little twiddly arrow to get your keyframes. These white lines are your keyframes. Now you can select a keyframe individually and drag it to retime it. If you want to keep the same proportion that you had, you can change all three together. To do that, group select them so that all three lines turn yellow. And if you come to the bottom left, you've got this icon with two arrows. Click it, it puts a box around all your keyframes. And then you simply stretch it. And that stretches your animation proportionately or equally. You can shrink your animation. So there's a few tips on keyframing. I uh, hope you find it useful. Uh, please feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll catch you on the next one.
Tschüss.